Hello and welcome to an IEU News Update. I'm Daniela Rintilli. New South Wales Education Minister Adrian Piccoli has introduced a bill into Parliament to amend the Teacher Accreditation Act. The bill makes some major changes to the current regime of accreditation, including requiring all New South Wales teachers to become accredited, including early childhood teachers for the first time. For the IEU opinion on the proposals, we asked General Secretary John Quessy. There are very few surprises among the amendments, and most proposals we welcome but we do have a long list of questions and we think there's a lot of essential details still missing. The big issues are those teachers who were employed prior to October 2004 will now become accredited. This has been known for some time and is due to happen by 2017, but the bill doesn't quite explain how this will occur. Although the Minister has stressed that the accreditation process will recognise their extensive experience and length of service. We intend to hold him and non-government school employers to that process of recognition. For the first time, early childhood teachers will be accredited and we're seeking confirmation that when this occurs, those teachers will be deemed accredited at proficient level. It's great that their professionalism is finally being recognised by government. Now we need state and federal government to support professional rates of pay for them. The bill fixes some of the weaknesses of the original Act. It provides at long last a capacity for teachers to put their accreditation on hold while they're on extended leave and seems to provide a capacity for BOSTES to extend the accreditation period in particular circumstances. It provides for the BOSTES to make rules in respect of teacher accreditation functions and we'll be watching how they use those powers closely, particularly how they consult and with whom they consult. There are some things that are still not fixed. We don't believe that there are adequate appeals mechanisms, particularly where a TAA refuses to accredit a teacher or revokes their accreditation. The government and BOSTES seem to forget that in our sector the TAA and the employer are one and the same and the gift of accreditation or reaccreditation is open to abuse. We will be making representations to government and to BOSTES on our issues and keep members advised as the bill makes its way through Parliament. The IEU campaign to improve the rate of pay for teachers who supervise the practicum or student teacher professional placement program began last November but looks set to be the success story of this year. Assistant Secretary Mark Northam says that the campaign was not just about money but also about providing PD and accreditation opportunities. I asked Mark what the union was up to with its negotiations with universities. The union is finalising arrangements that will see daily pay rates lift to $28.50 next year, then to $29.25 and $30 after that. This is great news as it is the first increase since 1991. This campaign has been member driven and, and successful. Teachers are seeking recognition for their vital role in supervising students. Every bit as important is that universities will seek to have this participation registered with BOSTES and the Teacher Quality Institute in the ACT as accredited PD. Professional experience is a contested space. Both federal and state governments, BOSTES and the universities are in unison that professional supervision must be reshaped. It is critical that classroom teachers who provide their accumulated wisdom and expertise are not overlooked in any reorganisation of professional experience. We are only waiting now for confirmation that every university in the state will be signing up to the agreement. This is a great win for members. The union has reached a successful resolution to the long-running dispute between the union, our independent school members and the Association of Independent Schools. On September 5th, both organisations issued a joint statement announcing that an agreement had been reached on the new multi-enterprise agreements. IEU Assistant Secretary Carol Matthews explains more. The union's no campaign was very effective in achieving a better outcome. Members in independent schools that is teachers and support and operational staff, were successful in getting their concerns about the previous deal across to school administrations. On the heels of our Strong No campaign, the deal between the Palmer United Party and the Federal Government to delay the scheduled super increases was the last minute trigger for the improved package. This was because there had been a lot of talk, including by the Prime Minister, that employees would get increases in their pay instead of the super. However, under the old proposals, the schools were grabbing a fair bit of the cash. The pressure of the No campaign also meant that in many schools, members were able to achieve additional school-based payments on top of the industry-wide settlement. The final pay increases achieved in the MEAs are still modest, 
but are now closer to current increases in other education sectors. Of course, the agreement rates in independent schools, especially for teachers, are still well above the rates in other sectors. That's why we've recommended the deal to members. Catholic school members continue to show their dismay with the proposed enterprise agreement by the CCER with members in the Canberra Goulburn Diocese recently gathering for large rallies in various locations including Canberra and Young. The union is negotiating with the CCER and progress is being made, albeit slowly. IEU General Secretary John Quessy has the latest. Protected industrial action by teachers and support staff has sent a strong message to the employers that members are not prepared to accept a substandard enterprise agreement. Negotiations are continuing and we're cautiously optimistic that a resolution can be reached. But in these types of negotiations, nothing is settled until everything is settled. Members have made it clear that major points such as promotions positions and RFF are non-negotiable. They don't want to have additional RE accreditation requirements foisted on them without compensation nor will they accept becoming slaves to the whims of employers' interpretation of the Catholic ethos. While the process is slow, members can be assured that the union is working to provide them with certainty and enforceability in an agreement they can support and understand. This is a significant year for the IEU, which celebrates its 60th anniversary in September. The Assistant Masters Association was formed in 1954, became the Assistant Masters and Mistresses Association in the 1960s, the ITA in the 70s, and became the Independent Education Union when it began enrolling non-teaching staff in 1994. Nowadays, the union provides a powerful professional voice for more than 30 33,000 members in the ACT and New South Wales and continues to expand. The IEU's resident history buff, General Secretary John Quessy, says there's much to celebrate. And for more information on these stories, please go to the IEU website.